Hola, soy yo Vicky otra vez. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it useful. Okay, so um, what I'm going to go through in this video is some questions and answers which practices everything in level one of Break the Language Barrier, which basically is present tense, regular verbs, some irregular verbs, etc, etc. And um, what I would recommend to anyone uh, who is using the series of books, um, before you start with level two, this is the first exercise in level two, and um, it's advisable to make sure you understand all these and get the questions and answers correctly, uh, correct before you move on with the rest of the book. For those of you um, who don't have the book, uh, it doesn't matter. This, uh, this video will stand on its own as an exercise in introducing yourself, asking questions and answering questions about yourself to other people. Um, it's on page three if you do have the book. If you don't have the book and you do want to buy it, it's available, all the books, there are four levels, they're all available on any Amazon site. Okay, so basically this is like an introduction practice that sometimes I get my students, uh, when new students start and they don't know each other very well, um, whatever level they are, as long as they've got some Spanish, uh, I get them to introduce each other using these questions and answers format to get to know each other a bit like an icebreaker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the question in English, then translate it into Spanish, and then I'm going to answer it in Spanish, but obviously your answers will be different. But maybe the main structure of them, the beginning of them, will be the same, but obviously you've got your own personal answers. Okay, so number one is, what's your name? And to ask somebody what's their name, we say, ¿Cómo te llamas? And that actually doesn't mean what's your name, it means what do you call yourself? And in this level, we will be looking at what are called reflexive verbs, and that will explain how that works. So, ¿Cómo te llamas? And I would reply, me llamo Vicky. Yeah, my name is Vicky, or I call myself Vicky. Número dos, where do you live? ¿Dónde vives? And I would say, vivo en España. Y número tres, do you live in a house or an apartment? ¿Vives en una casa o un apartamento o piso? Uh, and I would say, vivo en una casa. What is your house like? ¿Cómo es tu casa? So, um, ¿cómo es? is the expression that we always use to ask what someone or something is like. So, ¿cómo es tu casa? And I would say, mi casa es alta. My house is tall. It's a townhouse, so it's on a few floors. Y número cinco, are you married? Estás casada? So I'm a woman, so somebody asking me would say casada. If you're asking a man, you would say casado. And I would say, no, no estoy casada. Uh, do you have any children? Uh, número seis. <laughs> Tienes hijos, uh, sons and daughters, or you could say tienes niños también, and I would say, si sí, tengo un hijo. Y how old are they? ¿Cuántos años tienen? Well, tiene for him because there's only one. I would say, tiene 23 años. Y número 8, where do they live? Donde viven? And I would say, vive en España, también. Y número 9, what do you do in your spare time? So, what do you do is K. Haces. That's from this verb hacer, to do, H-A-C-E-R, but we don't pronounce the H, so it's que haces. 
in tu tiempo libre and I would say in mi tiempo libre I go videos <laughs> for a YouTube y vale y número 10 how many languages do you speak cuantos how many idiomas languages hablas do you speak so do you speak is just hablas cuantos idiomas hablas and I would say hablo inglés español y un poco de francés y alemán y why is Spanish important for you? so por qué es español importante para ti and I would say español es importante para mí porque vivo en España. Uh, when is your birthday? ¿Cuándo es tu cumpleaños? And I would say mi cumpleaños es en agosto. Y número 13. Uh, why do you want to learn Spanish? So why, por qué, uh, do you want, quieres, learn, aprender, and we use the infinitive because we've already conjugated, quieres. Por qué quieres aprender español? Uh, and I would say, quiero, I want, aprender, to learn, español. Porque vivo en España. Where do you work? Número 14. ¿Dónde trabajas? Yeah, the verb to work is trabajar. Put the ending on for you. ¿Dónde trabajas? And I would say, trabajo en España. Y what do you like most about Spain? So, ¿qué te gusta más de España and I would say me gusta más um, me gusta más el tiempo uh, but not at the moment because the weather is really bad at the moment but never mind si, sí, normalmente me gusta más el tiempo y Que te gusta, ah, what do you like least? So we still say, que te gusta, what do you like? And then menos, less or least. And I would say, me gusta menos uh, la papelería. Um, not papelería, la bureaucracia. That's because I was thinking of uh, paperwork and uh, bureaucracy all in the same one. It came out as bookshop. So things like that happen sometimes. So, me gusta menos la bureaucracia. Y vale, que te gusta menos. Ah, do you like Spanish food? Number 17, numero 17. ¿Te gusta la comida española? And I would say, sí, me gusta la comida española. Um, do you understand Spanish verbs? So you could either use comprendes o entiendes los verbos españoles. And I would say, sí, entiendo o comprendo Los verbos españoles. Uh, why must you study Spanish? So, número 19. Uh, now, this must, that is the verb deber. So, por qué, why, must you, debes. And then we use the infinitive of the verb to study, estudiar español. ¿Por qué debes estudiar español? And I would say, debo, I must, estudiar español. 
I must um, study Spanish porque vivo en España. So it's more or less the same answer as the others. But well, no, it's just for the practice of deber, really, that question. Okay, and who do you remember most from school? So, a quien, so remember the personal a, when a verb uh, refers to a person, we need it to throw an a in there, a personal a. A quien recuerdas más, who do you remember most? Del colegio or de la escuela, and I would say recuerdo más a mis amigas. Y, vale. Número 21, why do you want to speak Spanish? ¿Por qué quieres hablar español? Okay, so that's very, I don't know if it's actually might be repeated from the other one, but uh, quiero hablar español porque me gusta. Yeah, I want to speak Spanish because I like it. Uh, where is your car? Número 22. So be donde está, so it's location, so we're using the verb estar. Donde está tu coche? And I would say mi coche está en la calle. Numero 23, who is your best friend? Quien es tu mejor amigo or amiga? Uh, and I would say, tengo dos mejor amigos, mis perros. Vale. Y número 24, where do you normally go on Sundays? Don, a donde normalmente vas, remember the verb ir, los domingos. And I would say, normalmente... Como I have lunch con mi hijo los domingos. Where are you from? Numero 25. Now this is the verb ser because it's origin where you come from. De donde eres. There's an explanation on one of the videos of the Caprington Flummets of how to remember uh, whether to use ser or estar, so if you're still not sure, you need to perhaps go back over and look at that again. Um, so, de donde eres, and I would say soy de Manchester. And are you happy? This is estar, because it's a mood or a feeling. Estás feliz or contenta, también puedes decir. And I would say, sí, estoy contenta. And then, 27, what are you like? Yeah, this asking for a description. So this is the verb ser. Como eres? What are you like? So it's asking for what you look like or what sort of person you are. So I would say, soy rubia, uh, vaca, short, y... Gordita. E, so, Gordita is a polite way of saying a few extra pounds. Let's say. Okay, so what do you do in the evening? Numero 28. ¿Qué haces por la tarde? Yeah, or por la noche también puedes decir. And I would say, por la tarde. Uh, paseo con mis perros y veo la tele, ¿vale? Y número 29, what do you drink in a restaurant? ¿Qué bebes en un restaurante? And I would say, bebo normalmente, bebo vino rosado. Y número 30, do you drink a lot of coffee? Uh, bebes mucho café? And I would say, sí, bebo mucho café por la mañana.
Yeah, I drink a lot of coffee in the morning. Okay, ballot. So, uh, all those questions use something that came up in my level one. So, hopefully, you, you know, you remembered uh, okay. If you didn't, as I say, go back, do them again, do the exercises again. You cannot do things often enough, really. Uh, if you want to remember things, if you want them to stick and you want them to come instantly, when you're out there in the big wide world trying to sort of conjure up a bit of Spanish because you're in a situation where you need it, um, the more repetition you've done beforehand, the better and the quicker it will come to you. Because always remember, you know, your brain is like a filing cabinet and it can only fit so much in. So every time you put something new in it, the other bit goes to the back. So you have to keep bringing it back to the front again. Uh, on a regular basis because if, if you can spend months without even speaking Spanish uh, but then when you're suddenly thrown in it's going to take you a while to bring it back to the front again whereas if you practice on a regular basis practice more and more times till it's you know absolutely indelibly printed in your brain it definitely helps okay yeah, it's that. So what I'll be doing in uh, videos to come is we'll be starting to go through the uh, pain barrier, the level two, break the language barrier, reflexive verbs, past tenses, pronouns, etc. Um, and don't be scared. Sounds much more difficult than it is. Uh, as with everything, practice makes perfect. Okay, if you found this video helpful, please give it the thumbs up because that's uh, a great indicator to me that it's been helpful. And if you uh, want to see future videos, uh, please press the subscribe button and then you'll get your instant notification when I release a new video. Vale, ya está. So, muchas gracias y hasta la próxima. Adiós.